couldn't really celebrate nil-nil draws, but get in there, you yellows. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it's time to do another review of another Oxford United game. Today, the U's were at home to Burnley. This time last season, Burnley were rubbing elbows with the stars of the Premier League, whilst Oxford were slumming it in League One. Both find themselves in the Championship now, and it really highlights the step up in class and quality that you find at this level. But this game really wasn't a classic by any stretch of the imagination. It won't live long in the memory, certainly not for the Burnley fans but Oxford can take a lot of credit and a lot of heart for the way they battled and they scrapped they couldn't make it four wins out of four at home but they still come away with a creditable draw no goals in this one as it finished Oxford United nil Burnley nil and we will go over everything I'll go over the team news I'll give my review of the game and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video you can jump to any point of the video if you like that's absolutely fine just use the timestamps down below but if you do that the very least you can do is hit like on this video because that does help me out a lot and if you do like the content then consider subscribing can't imagine I'll get many views on this one so any likes as I say really really will help this video out but let's look at the team news starting with those glorious boys in yellow and blue and it's three changes for Des Buckingham as United looking to bounce back from defeat at Bristol City and it's a first start in the heart of defence for Ben Nelson highly rated defender coming in on loan from Leicester it'll be good to see him means a tweak at the back but it's not Kieran Brown who drops out. It's Greg Lee who drops to the bench. And Kieran Brown moves to left back, which we haven't seen for a long, long time. Will Vaults finds his place back in the midfield after Josh McEachran went off injured against Bristol City last weekend. But McEachran is still fit enough to be on the bench. Moving on to Burnley then, and Scott Parker's Clarets have started the season well, and they could have gone top today if they got the win. They make two changes from their last gasp victory over Portsmouth last weekend. It's young centre-back Bashir Humphreys who replaces Joe Worrell. I think Joe Worrell's out with an injury. That's another injury to you Burnley fans. And Jeremy Sarmiento comes in for Jaden Anthony. Burnley have a long injury list. They have a big squad, but they're still without some key players like Jordan Bayer, Aaron Ramsey, Nathan Redmond. But despite that, there is still a lot of quality in this team with the likes of Josh Brownhill, Lyle Foster and Luca Colioso. Under no illusions in this one that this was going to be a really tough test for Oxford United. So let's move on to the game then. And look, this first half was really dull. Really, really dull. Not much happened at all. I would just say in the early stages of this one, my mind did drift back to that playoff final against Bolton because Oxford were just sitting very deep, letting Burnley have it. And were clearly, it was just that we were going to try and hit them on the break. This is where you see the difference at championship level because Burnley are just so composed at the ball, no matter who is on it that Oxford could just barely get a kick at times for the opening 20, 30 minutes of the game. Burnley pretty much dominated the whole of the ball. But despite that, they really didn't create many chances. They did get into some dangerous areas, but they just really couldn't create any goal scoring chances and couldn't work Jamie coming. It took until 25 minutes for Burnley to have their first real shot. And that was Lyle Foster blazing over the bar. A couple of minutes later and Burnley had another chance, this time from an Oxford United mistake. Ben Nelson playing a terrible crossfield ball, really, and Burnley had the chance to counter-attack. It came to Foster again on the edge of the box and his shot was deflected behind by an Oxford defender and by Jamie coming for a corner. And as the half drifted on, you did see Oxford start to get a little bit more possession. They did start to grow into the game a little bit, but they really struggled to lay a glove on Burnley, really. And there were no nothing really for Trafford to do and really no real bright sparks for Oxford fans to get behind. And there's not really much more to talk about this first half, really. It ended nil-nil. As I said, very dull game. But from an Oxford point of view, we'll be pretty happy with that and pretty happy with the way that we defended. Limited Burnley to very little, despite the Clarets having the lion, more than the lion's share of possession. Sarmiento and Colioso... Definitely Burnley's brightest sparks and every time they get on the ball you sense something could happen and they got into dangerous areas on numerous occasions in the first half but Oxford did well of closing the door and denied Burnley from having any 
clear cut chances at goal, but from an opposite point of view, they barely had a sniff as well. Dembele looking a very frustrated figure out there, as was Mark Harris, as nothing really Oxford was trying to do was coming off. And you just had to think, will this game liven up in the second half? Well, from an Oxford point of view, I don't really mind if it doesn't, but we will see. Join me for the second half. It is fair to say it did get better in the second half and straight away we were seeing more purpose from both sides. They were moving the ball with a bit more intent. Oxford certainly moving the ball quicker through the thirds as well. A couple of decent attacks from Oxford United at the start of the second half, which really came to nothing. But then Burnley had their best chance, Colioso and Hannibal creating some nice space on the Burnley right. It was Colioso who got free and got a bit of space on the edge of the box. It was a fine curling effort destined for necessarily not right in the corner, but the top of the goal and coming had to do very well to turn it over the bar. 58 minutes on the clock and the Will Volks mistake alert is shining bright again. It's harsh on Volks because I thought he had a good game, but he seems to have a mistake in him every single week. And this was his here today. He got caught in possession on 58 minutes in the Oxford half. Hannibal robbed him, got to the edge of the box. All Volks could do was just get back and drag him down. The best thing for Volks was he didn't get a yellow card for some reason for the foul. And it presented Burnley with a really good chance, middle of the goal, 20 yards out, but it was Foster whose free kick was really tame and just hit the wall and Oxford cleared the pressure. Burnley created two more really good chances in this second half and here is the first of them on 63 minutes. Their wingers swapped sides and it was Colioso this time attacking from their left Oxford's right who just ran through, burst through a couple of Oxford challenges, got into the area. It was a good low cross which went right the way across the penalty area. Sarmiento coming off the other flank. First time effort but unfortunately for Fortunately for Oxford, he put it into the car park. Buckingham made changes with 20 minutes to go. You saw Edwards and Dale come on for the final 20 minutes. And towards the end of this game, you did start to see Burnley, for the first time, make a couple of mistakes at the back. And, and 75 minutes on the clock, Estev gave the ball away to Goodrum. It meant Goodrum had a bit of space to attack the penalty area. He got into the box. It was a low cross, but Egan Riley did exceptionally well to cut it out. And a couple of minutes later, Oxford continued with a little bit of pressure. Dale with a couple of decent crosses, and there were some goal mouth scrambles in there as well, and it nearly presented Mark Harris with a tap-in, and that was probably the best Oxford looked from an attack point of view in the whole game but the final chance of the game was Burnley's on 82 minutes Colioso again at the heart of it he burst again down the flank back on his normal side flew past Kieran Brown like he wasn't there cross into the box Brownhill who I thought had a quiet game but he got his head on this one and it just sort of hit Hatonje and then went wide of the goal. I don't think there was really much Tonje could have done with it. It just kind of, he was on him before he realised that the chance was there. And Oxford kind of breathed another sigh of relief. And the time ticked down. Three minutes of injury time. Oxford defended manfully. Cheering every time the ball went out of play. Every clearance. One of those weird things in football where you're hanging on, you're biting your fingernails for that nil-nil draw. But Oxford saw it through this time. Unlike when we're away from home where we see to throw these points away we do end up getting a point creditable point nil nil draw and that brings me to my final thoughts and let's start with the visitors in Burnley and look it's quite clear that Burnley are man for man a better side than Oxford United and you can't I'm not even going to try to make an argument against that I don't think Burnley did a great amount to break Oxford down I thought they were quite frustrated with the way Oxford set up and I don't think there were there were wasn't like you were comp constantly banging on the door and constantly creating chances and that'll probably be the most frustrating thing for the Burnley fans and for Scott Parker I know you're missing a lot of players but I don't really felt that I don't particularly like Lyle Foster I don't really feel like he had a great game at all and it didn't really feel like Burnley had that real cutting edge in front of goal. So I wonder if you're just kind of lacking that kind of penalty box poacher a little bit and maybe that's why Oxford were kind of relatively comfortable in seeing the game out. But without a doubt, the two wingers were the stars of the show. Sarmiento was decent, but Colioso was exceptional. Clearly Burnley's best player. I don't know why you didn't just try and give him the ball every single time he had it because he seemed like he was the one guy that could 
run round Oxford United players at will. But I guess one thing that will give you heart is the fact that the defence looks a little bit stretched for Burnley at the moment. You have some youngsters in there, but you still look pretty solid and pretty decent at the back. So you can't win them all, Burnley fans. I know you'll probably be expecting to win this one today, but maybe you can give Oxford a little bit of credit for the way they defended. It will be a really tough game when we go back up to Turf Mall, I think in February time. But good luck for the rest of the season. Let me know your thoughts on this side, on Scott Parker, and whether you think what it's, you've got it, what it takes to get back into the Premier League. Because you are actually my favourites to win the league this season. And that moves me on to Oxford United. And again, it's one of those silly things in football where it's a nil-nil draw. It's nothing special, but you're really proud of the way the the side scrapped and fought and battled for that point. For overall, the team selection by Des Buckingham was spot on. I thought uh, Ben Nelson coming in, I thought he was excellent at the back today. He made one mistake in the game, but for overall, he was really solid. I thought Kieran Brown was immense at left back and of course Elliot Moore was brilliant there as well but I have to say again I thought Peter Chioso was the standout defender for me I thought he was excellent again today and he seems to be getting better game on game not really much for Oxford United going forward and frustratingly there was just a couple of counter-attacks where we just couldn't get the ingredients right there was one where Goodrum had an easy ball to play for Dembele for Dembele to go on a counter-attack after a poor Burnley corner but Goodrum overhit the pass and and El Mazzuni late on in the game had a chance to free Edwards and he dilly dallied on the ball a little bit. And I must say, I don't think El Mazzuni was great today in midfield. I thought Will Vaux was very good today. I thought he, maybe there was a few Oxford fans who are questioning Will Vaux, but I thought he sort of showed his calibre of what sort of a player he is today. Obviously, he's got that long throw in in his locker as well, but I thought he was he made some good tackles. I thought he was composed on the ball, and I thought generally he was a solid member of that Oxford United midfield. So whilst it was frustrating from an Oxford United point of view when they were going forward and they tried to implement that game plan that we did against Bolton where you would just... you would breaking bolt breaking the opposition down and hitting them hitting them impactfully on the break with a lot of pace and speed we just couldn't execute that well enough today which was a little bit frustrating and I don't think it's a case of just not having Josh Murphy I just don't feel we could quite get Dembele or Edwards into the game enough and I think you just have to give credit to Burnley that for that with the way they were so much such a better side at passing the ball around the back or passing the ball around midfield or even if they did lose possession getting back into shape very quickly but all in all not really too much more to say uh, I, I think this is a creditable draw for Oxford United we move on to 10 points now uh, we move on to a very difficult away game against Luton who lost last night to Plymouth so you know they're going to be desperate to get that victory at Kenilworth Road but who knows maybe that is where we get our first point on the road but if it's not maybe we can do it against Pompey at the weekend a big week ahead for Oxford United but we start it with another point on the board we move up to 10 points you just got to, every single point should be cherished and should be celebrated so that's what I think we should do Celebrate it, Oxford United fans. This was a good, hard fought point for the Yellows, and we'll move on to the next game. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back to do a review of the Portsmouth game. We're going to have predictions videos flying out at any time, whenever I get time to do them. So please support them as well and watch those ones. I tried to make them a little bit more fun and a little bit quicker. But all in all, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave your comments as always down below, and I'll be back very soon.